All right, ha have you guys ever had an idea that is so like odd that you can't not do it? Hang tight. Now, I know what you're thinking. That is a slightly larger than normal amount of dog hair. And I completely agree with you. In fact, in the past month, my dog hair collection has nearly doubled in size in preparation for this video. Here's the thing is that I'm, a, I'm around dogs a lot and I love dogs, but the they're, they're hairy, you know? I think that anyone that has owned a dog at one point in time has uh, had the thought like, this dog sheds a lot. Why don't I try to make a sweater out of all of that hair? But here's the thing is that I got to wondering like, why don't people do that? Why don't people make sweaters out of dog hair? And you know what? It turns out that, that they do. They do make sweaters, can I? <laughs> If you look on YouTube, there are literally dozens of videos of people. There's even this one woman that has like an entire business. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So I have a lot of dog hair from several different breeds that I'm going to turn into a sweater. Not even just a regular sweater. I want to make, uh, I like hoodies. So I'm going to make a hoodie. There's two different methods that you can do. The, the obvious one where you can kind of spin it into a yarn and then knit it. Or you can do what I'm about to do. I'm going to felt all of this hair into big sheets and what felting is. You know how dogs get like mats in their hair? Kind of kind of do that on purpose, but like uniformly and make a big piece of cloth out of it. So that's what I'm going to do. First, this hair is by and large, objectively disgusting. So I'm going to go and sort it all out. Sort the dog wheat from the dog chaff. We say we go take care of that. Time to find out what I have gotten myself into. This is so much more gross than I expected. You know what, I don't, well, uh, I touched something. You know, basically if, if there's anything in here that's not like just solid hair, I'm used to it now. At first it was like terrible and I wanted to die. Now it's okay. There we are, all nice and clean and smells like wet dog. Okay, our dog hair has been sorted and washed and dried, and right now I have it in a bunch of clumps like this. And all the fibers are all kind of tangled together loosely, and the next step is gonna be to get them all facing the same direction. So to do that, we're going to card the fibers, and appropriately, the easiest tool to use for this is dog brushes. And give them a good old brushing. And when you're done, it looks quite fluffy. And while my disembodied hands sort through all that hair, I just want to give a huge thank you to Mud Puppies. If y'all are in the Austin, Texas area and you need any grooming or boarding done by cool people that don't mind a YouTuber harassing their groomers, check them out. They're good people and I appreciate them very much. Thanks guys. All right, there we are. One clump of dog hair carded. Took me about eight minutes to do a single clump and I only have a few more to do, so. I guess I'll be here for the rest of my natural born life, but you don't have to stick around for all that. I'll just jump ahead to when it's done and after lots of therapy. I used an old hoodie as a template. I just used a thread ripper to break it down to its component pieces. Then I took those component pieces and kind of made an outline with them on some bubble wrap. And then I laid down my cleaned and carded fur onto the bubble wrap into the general shape that I knew that the final piece would need to be. From there I sprayed it down with some soapy water. This is important because it's going to allow the fibers to kind of intermingle with each other. During the next step, which is to roll up the fibers into like a bubble wrap and a dog hair burrito and roll it until your arms fall off. When you're done with that, you got yourself a piece of felted fabric. And then I just did that over and over again for many, many days. All right, got a little bit of a speed bump. So felting, while much easier than knitting or anything like that, it does shrink a lot. And even when I try to make it like as big as possible, it always seems to shrink down to like half the size I need it to be. So you can see I sized this originally for this whole sleeve here and it shrunk down to like way less than I need. So what I've taken to doing is kind of cutting off the excess and then taking the excess pieces and kind of like piecemealing it together on the rest of the uncovered surface and then sewing it all down to make a solid uh, connection to the fabric underneath. And it works pretty good. 
The next step was a lot of sewing. I just went around the edges of every piece by hand. It was too thick to do with a sewing machine. And just got all of the patches of felt just very secure to those pieces of hoodie, which now became the lining. All right, our pieces have been made. And I am very happy with how these turned out. They are way thicker than I was planning. You eagle-eared viewers may remember at the beginning of the video when I said I was going to be making a hoodie, and you will be noticing now that I am a liar. I am very happy with how all of this turned out. Definitely a little bit uh, more Buffalo Bill than I was planning, but their dog hair and their fabric and what more can you ask you know what i'm saying i do want to address the fact that i'm using an actual hoodie as a lining you know it's like just make a hoodie out of a hoodie the fabric in its own right is very durable here's a little sample piece and it's very strong you could definitely do something with it on its own it's just very uncomfortable so that is the main reason i went with the lining also, it's nice to have a little backing so that I could sew everything down to and get this thing to be coherent and wearable and workable. So now it is time for the final assembly. I'm gonna be sewing everything together into, you know, a sweater shape. I also kept the elastic bits from the original garment. So I'll be reattaching those to hopefully make it look a little more polished than, you know, the dog hair snowman I will inevitably become. The final assembly was pretty straightforward. I just put all of the pieces back together inside out, so that way when they were flipped right side out at the very end, all the seams would be nice and clean. It was a little tricky because of, once again, how thick the fabric was, so it took a little wrestling to get everything into their final positions, but it worked out in the end. There we are. So this is what a, a month of my life looks like. Overall, I think it's, um, very big, but I think the patterns look kind of cool. It smells, it's itchy, but it exists. So <laughs> I guess, I guess we can call it a success. It's a beautiful 85 degree day out today. So picked the perfect time of year to try this. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't hate it. I mean, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. I feel like a disgusting marshmallow. I don't know, I got a ton of extra dog hair left over, so I don't know what to do with it. No, you tell me, what should I do with it? Is there something that you would like to see made out of dog hair? And let me tell you, if this video doesn't get like a ton of views, it's not happening. I'm not doing this again unless there's like some algorithmic incentive. But I'm glad I tried it. So I guess that's gonna do it for me today. Thanks for watching. Got another video popping up there if you wanna look at that. I don't know, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. All right, bye.